Hello all, Trans99 here, and today I'll be reviewing the, uh, the Lepin set number 21005. It's the uh, Emerald Knight knockoff that I didn't know existed for a while, but it showed up on eBay, and um, it's really good quality, surprisingly. For a uh, Chinese knockoff, this is one of the best quality sets I've ever seen produced since Enlighten somehow disappeared into the nether regions of who knows where, probably just went out of business, because they stick around for about a month, uh, not a month, about a few years, and then they leave. Uh, so here we have this set in its completion. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to tell much that it's different at all from LEGO, other than possibly the uh, rubber bands around the main drive wheels are clear instead of red, and the number is clearly different uh, from Lego's set number 10195, something like that, I don't remember. But uh, at the price point of around a hundred dollars pretty much anywhere on eBay, a little more, a little less, depending on where you look and how much you're willing to uh, search, it's a really, really good set. It rolls just like Lego with relatively no problems. Um, connectors are mediocre, but they attach and they pull quite well. Um, so, with the instructions, the instructions are relatively nice. Um, if you can see here, these are the instructions. For some reason, they've scribbled out lay pen on there and sharpie on both sides, which is quite strange. Uh, there's also some random sharpie marks for God knows why. The only problems I had with the uh, instructions, and they are turned sideways, which is quite nice, is that the dark brown is relatively difficult to distinguish from the black, um, especially since they appear to have upped the brightness on the colors before produ production of these instruction manuals. Um, especially when it's nine o'clock at night and you're you should be asleep. You really should after a hard day, but you're putting together this like freaking insomniac or something, right? Um, they've even included instructions on how to ins include the power functions. But I don't have power functions because they're expensive. I don't feel like I need them because I don't have anywhere to run them. They've put this weird sticker as well. I don't know what that sticker's there for, and I don't want to risk peeling it off. I think there's just more of it underneath. That's quite odd. But it includes the, uh, that's cut off probably because they squish all the instructions together on one page as many as they can. But, um, motorize this set the same way LEGO does because it's built the same way with a large motor or an XL motor, I'm not sure. Um, the infrared receiver and the lights and the rechargeable battery box in the coal tender. Which is nice. It's good. And I'm fairly certain it would work the same as LEGO. No problems, really. Uh, just get all the other faff out of the way. Here's a little sticker sheet, what's left of it. You can see you got the uh, second, third for the class of the car. And then we've got the uh, numbers that I have no idea what they're for. Go all the way up to nine. I'd assume there's something for the car, but I'm not sure. It doesn't show anywhere in the instructions, Lego or Laypen, as much as I can tell, where do you use those. But they're cool, and you can use them for whatever you want, I guess. You can put them on your house, and nobody will know where you live because they're tiny. Um, uh, figures we'll look at later, because why not? So let's take a quick look at each of the cars individually. Alright, so here we have the engine piece. The engine piece, yeah, sure, why not? We'll go with that. Um, Lego, pretty much. Um, I don't actually have this set from Lego because they're god-awfully expensive, and I don't enjoy paying massive amounts for Lego, especially just because it's they're upcharging because they're Lego. No better reason. 
uh, went together perfectly fine. I had no issues apart from a little tiny issue with these 1x2 plates that just kind of fall off of these little clips. I think it's a problem. Uh, manufacturing defect in the clip itself that holds it on, but that's like a very small argument for a very big and relatively cheap set. So if you already know all about the engine, then you know that it's highly detailed. You've got the uh, bit on the inside with the fireplace and the shovel, because you can't see that. There you go, fireplace and shovel. You've got this side with the uh, aerodynamic bit, the ears there. And you've got the front with the uh, decal I applied rather poorly because I'm still unhappy about that. And of course we got the uh, ridiculously floppy bits for the wheels that I quite enjoy just because they're like that for some reason. I don't know. I mean, I might, I might really, really, really enjoy trains, but I'm not sure why those are so floppy. Um, actually, speaking of them, take off the back one. Because, uh, Leipin does not include the uh, little rubber bits for the wheels. Rubber bands. And, I don't know if LEGO does. I, I would assume that LEGO had, uh, in fact, when I was looking at the LEGO box, I believe these were, uh, rubber band, rubber banded. They had rubber bands applied. So, what you can do... To, simp that, uh, to fix that simple mistake is take some orthodontic elastics and I believe they'll fit on these. I haven't actually tried. I love how much the camera's trying to follow me, but I wish it wouldn't. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good set. Really enjoy it. It's quite nice. Printed pieces. Stickers. Sticker. Yeah, sticker on the front. Stickers right up in the very front. Nice magnet pieces that are decent quality. Uh, just barely subpar to Legos. Connectivity. And then with these, they're kind of squishy. I mean, they're not molded perfectly, these plasticky bits. The ones that run along there, but... They're pretty okay. And of course, putting this back on the rails is... Forgetting a piece. Because I'm good at that kind of thing, but... It's, uh, it's pretty good. And of course you've got this little bit that just amuses me somewhat, that you can just take out whatever that is, all the parts for the power functions. You just take it out like, this is how the train runs, kids. You sure about that, Dad? No. Alright, so next we can look at the, uh, coal tender. Alright, well, while I was setting up the next shot, my sister was kind enough to put the little rubber bands on the wheels, uh, because I don't know how they work. And she's got braces, so of course she knows how they work. And here it is. Little rubber bands on the wheels. I use purple because of course. And they work pretty alright. They do stay on, and I mean, it's going to have a little bit of issues, but of course it is. They're not actual Lego, not even close. They're to put in your face, not in your Lego. So that works rather nice, and especially with the weight of a giant train on it, it's going to go fine. So we'll stick that under there. You can't even see it. All right, and here we have the rather simple little coal tender. Um, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised that they were on bogies. I didn't expect that, but since this is just a uh, copy of Lego, Lego did a pretty good job designing this. Lapin did a pretty good job just copying it, I guess. Uh, another slight problem I had was this little piece in here. It's a uh, three stud long axle. You need to push it a little bit far because the, uh, yeah, doesn't quite fit into the brick that it's holding on to, but it's pretty okay. Um, everything else that this does, it's got doors. You can open their doors. It's quite nice. That's pretty much, that's, that's the extent of its functions. It, has little doors you can open. It's got wheels. And it's quite empty inside. This isn't going to be going anywhere, is it? I'm still not sure what LRTS stands for. But... Yeah, that's pretty good. I like the minifig heads. That's pretty fun. 
So, yeah, of course all of this is going to fit on Lego perfectly fine. All right, I forgot about that. All right, here we have the passenger car. Again, if you've already seen the Lego version, this is that, but made by, again, separate company. Because it's cheaper and I like that. Anyway, so we've got the color scheme, of course. A little bit of problem with brick fit there. None of this falls apart easily, by the way, which is very nice. We've got the doors. Um, there's not actually a band on, it's just the doors that open. That's on both sides, of course. Unlike the Alcini train, which had the uh, relative copy of this that didn't actually have any doors that opened, and it was a bit odd. Um, put that there because I need to recoup my thoughts. Right. Um, on the bottom, even this nice little detailed piece is done perfectly. Um, the bogies are done in black. I'm not sure if LEGO did that. I'd assume they did. Uh, and then it's got the removable roof. You can click off there. A little bit bent. Uh, some of the plates. Just a tiny bit bent-ish. But, you know, what do you expect? And it goes on relatively well. So inside you can see all the pretty basic stuff. Same as LEGO. These uh, little drawers here, they actually fit quite well. They, uh, they have a lot of um, friction in them so they don't just you know, fall open like that. Uh, well, I've made it fun to put that back in. I'll do that later. You know, it's got the little minifig accessories like the cups and the... Yeah, everything fits together quite nicely. And of course on the doors you've got the stickers that say first and... LRTS, again, I've got no idea what that means. If somebody in the comments wants to tell me, I might be slightly appreciative. In fact, I'd be greatly appreciative. I've been wondering that for a few days now, what it means. But yeah. Rolls fine. Looks fine. Same with the Lego set. Uh, Lego set, it's a shame you only get one. Uh, yes, the couplers do run into some slight issues, and that's being demonstrated here in that they don't always connect. Uh, they are supposed to be able to revolve around an axis in the center, but they don't always do that quite well. Sometimes you get stuff like that, but as I covered in a previous video that came out what feels like years ago, um, you can just connect those with pieces. And now we have the figures. So, let's look at them. I mean, they're there, right? And you're watching this to see things, right? Good for you. So right here we have... Um, my unsteady hand, and the camera's hating me. Now, um, got this figure. Yep, little traveler person. She looks the exact same as Lego. Uh, not any noticeable differences, or notable differences that I can tell, other than you have to completely assemble the figures, including putting their arms on their torsos, and their legs on their waist bit. And their hands in their arms, of course. They come in complete pieces. And I thought it would be terrible to build them. Actually, it's quite nice. Because they go together relatively well. Which I don't remember being a thing with LEGO, anyway. Uh, then we've got Mr. Conductory Man. With his self. And his jacket with his little train logo and some sort of pen and note card. Like I said, looks the exact same. No real notable differences. These guys are great. Uh, light blue, very uh, stone blue pants, I believe. They're quite nice. He's pretty good. And then we've got Mr. I am angry because I stand in front of a uh, burning thing all day. The engineer. Or the fireman. Whatever. It's funny that they only include one figure to drive a steam engine. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, right, let me move this way. Relatively the same. No printing on most of these. Uh, well, actually, just the two torsos, and then you got Mr. Jacket. But uh, he's got his little scarf there for, I don't know, dealing with smoke inhalation and um, retirement. And he's got his hat with his hat. The only problem I've got with this figure is his head is ridiculously loose. 
right? It's amazing how loose that head is. It it does stay on, but I'm actually kind of surprised it does. And I've actually wondered this a little bit. Can we put this around like that? Oh, we can. Oh, look. He's forgotten his gas mask. That's too bad. The train got on fire. So there we have them. He's going to look that way for reasons. So now we've got uh, some slight problem pieces. As pointed out by the, uh, the guy I like to watch over at Bricks You May Want, uh, I'll probably link his channel somewhere in the something probably, I don't know. Maybe an annotation, maybe in the description, probably both. Uh, these little suitcases, they don't close. Um, like the uh, Lego ones, they do open, but these are also slightly bigger than the Lego ones, I've noticed they're wider which means they also don't fit in the uh, luggage area of the coach car very well. But they look kind of nice when they're closed. Ah, it's a feat of uh, absolute amazingness and slight coincidence that this one's decided to stay closed. That's amazing. All right, let's bring in another one. Here it is. Yep, these don't really like to stay closed because they are not uh, connected via the handle at all. Handle's one piece. And the rest of it opens so that when the Lego minifigs are, I guess the minifigs are holding it, uh, they can't hold it shut because that just pops open. I've even tried putting it with the uh, opening bit facing the figures and to no avail. That will push itself away from them suddenly. And I got two of the black ones and uh, this magical little brown one that I don't know why it's staying shut, but it is. That makes me quite happy. Uh, extra pieces. I only got two real extra pieces. The, uh, I got a little wedge, uh, cheese wedge type shape in light gray, and a one by one in black. And I don't know if I've already mentioned, but the, uh, colors are identical to Lego in every way. I have not found any difference, even slightly. And some more extra pieces. Uh, were these little, if you can't see them, I'm sorry. Yes, um, these little angle bits that you use to put on headlights and whatnot. Uh, because they're used earlier on in instruction, but, or I guess in the build, but I was reading up on my Facebook group that I'm in with the Brick Toy Brands Trains, which is where I heard about this, and they said that um, with the way these are installed, they're installed like this to take the place of a, oops, two by two, or uh, sorry, a one by one, that is uh, two-thirds brick right here. So you put them in like that and this little stud would get in the way of the wheels moving. And I checked the uh, Lego instructions which use it the same but they said that this would cause friction with the wheels and they'd say to uh, just file it off so instead I just replaced it with two one by one by one third tiles which is nice. And I would assume that this bit was also used for something as it is later in the build elsewhere. All right, well, here's the uh, finale of this long-awaited review for me, I guess. I don't know, it's been two days since I built the thing. Um, very nice set for the price point of around $100 as compared to going and buying the original LEGO one, which you'd have to have either really bad, um, really bad money control or you'd have to be rich. So it's really good. It's really good. I don't really have much else to say about it. Um, very nice quality. Wheels are a little bit sticky up there, but of course they are. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. It actually rolls quite fine. Yeah, it's a good price point at around 100 Um It's pretty much almost identical to LEGO quality, just slightly under, um, as you can somewhat tell from random bits and pieces of it. I had no issues really when building it, except for those two little one by 2s And I think it's a very nice set. It's very high quality. Just remember to use rubber bands on these. They work quite well. That's why those are there. And we've got the magical little briefcase that for some reason was able to close, even though they really don't. So, don't expect that. Do not expect them to close. 
if they close, you are a lucky person and you can consider yourself very lucky. It's a very good set, I totally recommend it. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next whenever I make one of these things.